I can tell you that the first thing you need to do if you want to become an owner, you got to have the right mindset. You know, you got to, are you willing to, to pay the price? Welcome to Livestream. I'm your host, Dr. Alex Plains, with my co-host, Jeremy. How you doing today? How's the politic life treating you? <laughs> That's an interesting question to ask. Um, good. Have you seen the market today? Yes, it's been... Uh, well, no, actually, it's rebounding. It's rebounding. Not enough. I mean, the, the Dow Jones rebounded 800 points yesterday, and today it's up 200 points. Now, listen, that's great and all, but we have a long way to go. But inflation's not going down. No, it won't. No, I heard, no. I read that mortgage interest rates are up to 7%. That doesn't surprise me either. Yep, and I think they're going to go higher. Unfortunately. Will we get will we get to double digits? Possibly. we got to see how the inflation data starts taming down, if it does. But people, so, but people are spending less money now. Well, yeah, I mean, that whole thing is good. That whole thing is going to be crazy anyway. Like, how can you, how can you go in and buy a house that's not, that's a hundred thousand dollars over value. Like in two years, am I going to be able to sell my house for how much I bought my house for? I no, mean, you on. won't. You won't. I think Florida's going to have a ten to fifteen percent drop in real estate prices in the next year, eighteen months. I don't know. Well, that's not what the podcast is about today, guys. So what question? So what? What do you have for me today? Yeah, we've got a lot of uh, people DMing us and, with questions, and I thought it'd be a good opportunity for uh, you to share your life experience and give some people some advice. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited. Good. This is from Dave from Birmingham, Alabama. Hello, Dr. P. I want to start my own business, but I've never been an owner before. Any advice? <laughs> well, w there's a lot of advice I can give you. <laughs> um, I can tell you that the first thing you need to do if you want to become an owner, you got to have the right mindset. You know, you got to, are you willing to, to pay the price to the commitment that you're going to have to do, Dave, in order to become an owner? Because it's not going to be easy. Yeah. And once you own a business, it's, you know, it's constant operations. You won't, you really won't have any time to really relax. So I recommend that if you're not willing to put in the time and willing to do the sacrifices that are necessary and, you know, those sleepless nights and be committed completely to your business, it is better to just stay as an employee. Well, you know, and I think that um, ownership is a 24-hour, hour, seven-day-a-week job, you know. And it all depends on the industry. I mean, if you yeah. get into the restaurant industry, you know, those guys don't, don't stop. Yeah. You know, and you're going to miss a lot of time that you're going to be with your family and you're going to have to go because, you know, the chef, um, the chef um, canceled or he quit. Or, you know, the hostess is out and you have to find their replacement. Or even in the dental space, like, there's been times that I've been out on a vacation and I've had to drive back because one of the doctors is sick or ill and, you know, I got to step up and go in. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's difficult. Um, and, you know, I think that uh, doing a little bit of research is a win, you know. Like yeah, the research would only get, yeah, of course, I agree. But the research would only get you to a certain point. Yeah. You know, you can do research all the day, but if you're not executing on the research, it's it's useless. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so <clears throat> like, how do how would Dave decide? Like, okay, should he jump in and be an owner to start out, and then you know he's like, well, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I need to bring somebody in to help him. I mean, what does that look like? Yeah, the first thing he needs to figure out what is his purpose. Okay. Like for example, I realized that when I started. My dental practice, yes, the business side was very, and it just hit me like the other day. So I was thinking, what is the most important thing? What was it that I did in the very beginning that brought me success? And I thought it was the marketing. I thought it was hiring. The, obviously, all these elements are very important. I thought it was hiring the right team, having the, you know, the most equipped dental office with the nicest, you know, equipment and, you know, the big lavish equipment, but it hit me when I realized that my purpose was customer service and patient care. 
So when I realized that my whole goal was to focus on that patient and do whatever it takes to do the best job possible, or even if I made a mistake, make it right, that's what brings success. And then the mon- the money and everything else is going to follow. I think you said that great because, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, people are always like, I want to be an owner. Do I want to be an owner? But they're always thinking about this from the business. Financial side. Exactly. It's like, how much money am I going to make? Exactly correct. It's not so much a financial decision. It's more of a who am I as a person decision. That's right. Yeah. And I can look at our company internally um, based on some of the team members that we have. And I can pick up right away that a lot of the employees that are we have are not there for their that purpose. Yeah. They're there for other reasons, and it's mostly to get a paycheck. Yeah. So as an owner, you got to be able to identify those people that, you know, that are probably not there to, you know, serve the client or have that vision that you, that you have. And at that point, you got to sit down with them and be like, is this something that you really want to do? And what is the reason why? Yeah, so I, I agree. And I think that, you know, Dave, he really said a lot of great advice there. And I think really it needs to be a situation where, you personally need to decide, you know, what is your makeup? What is your, you, you're only going to be as successful as you want yourself to be. That's correct. So step up and, um, and you know, make it work. But if, I mean, I don't dismotivate anyone. If this is something you definitely want to do, you got to go for yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, your whole goal is to win, right? And make it a, a reality. But if you don't take those initiatives, like people think too much. Like, oh, do I do it? Do I not do it? And by the time you know it, you know, the economy crashes and then you're like, oh, no, I'm going to wait till the economy, the economy corrects itself. Don't go based on external environments. If this is something you really want to do, just get it done. I love how you said that because, you know, you're a big proponent of don't be fearful. Don't be fearful. And we are not fearful, folks. So, you know, you got to jump right in. And listen, you know, when we jump in, we jump in, all go, no quit understanding that we might need to there's going to be hard decisions exactly exactly there's going to be decisions and there's going to be times where the decisions you make you'll be kicking yourself in the head and being like why did i make these decisions but at the end of the day you got to live with them and learn from them and move forward and every negative event that takes place try to look for the positive maybe you didn't get that employee that you really wanted because they were going to you know ruin your company and I think those failures and those those negative situations should improve uh, your decision making and should improve the process of that situation, right? Because exactly. you know you're learning from this. Oh, I'm not going to make that mistake again. But it's created a situation where I didn't even know we could go turn left. I thought we always had to turn right. That's right. So it's interesting. Correct. So yeah, you just got to continue to stay focused on your goals, Dave, and you know go for them. Hey, you ready for another one? Yes, sir. Uh, Oh, they didn't leave a name on this one. Dr. Plains, I don't miss an episode. I have a complaint, and I have a question. All right. These guys like Cardone and Elon Musk, et cetera, make being an owner and a CEO seem very sexy. As a current owner, I say it's not sexy at all. I have a two-part question for you. Okay. Number one, can I borrow Jeremy for six months? LOL. I'll be happy to. (laughs) (laughs) For a price. <laughs> Two, how do I know if being an owner is the right thing for me? Well, that's, that's very great questions, and I'm going to be able to answer that. I think the first thing you got to do is you got to do a self-analysis of yourself. You got to figure out, because a lot of people think that being a CEO, an owner, a chief operating officer, uh, you know, a CFO, or whatever the case might be, or a director, or a regional, or a manager. It's gonna, everybody's gonna be following you yeah. just because of that title. I think it does, they, they do decide that there's some entitlement. Yeah, they that. definitely think, oh, I got a title, now people need to respect me. Yep. No, you gotta earn that respect, yep. and you gotta be willing to put in the price and you know, bust your ass every single day for them to respect you. For sure. So you gotta be you know, the leader of the army. Yeah, for sure. So if you have that mentality that, oh, everyone's going to follow me because I got promoted and now I am the regional manager or, you know, the director or whatever the case might be, that is not the right mentality. Number two, you got to care, right? You got to be focused on, you got to care about what you're doing, the process and what exactly you're doing. 
And number three, you got to always go in there with what I just previously said in the last question. What is your purpose? Yeah. Is your purpose to come here for a paycheck or your purpose is to do great, excellent patient care? And I think that you said that well, and I think that, you know, it's okay if you come there for a paycheck, right? You need people. You need, um, you need no, private. I don't, I, you, you I need dis- I'm sorry. Yeah? I disagree with you. Really? Okay. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think you need to, I don't think you need to have that purpose. I think you need to have that purpose. I'm sorry. I don't think you can just go there for a paycheck because it's going to reflect on your, on your, on your work performance. Okay. Now, do I think that we can correct some of these individuals behaviors by training and mentoring and coaching? I think, I think so. I think so. But that's why the PPFs are so important and aligning the PPS with the vision to make sure that they're even aligned with it because maybe they're just not in the right position, in the right seat, or in the right business industry. Maybe. But, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want people to come into my company to just work for a paycheck. Oh, that's true. That's true. That's true. There's no doubt about that. You know, but, you know, in the, in the grand scheme of things, I guess I'll rephrase this and you can still say I'm crazy. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think that you need to have privates and you need to have lieutenants and sergeants and generals and all that stuff that built into, you know, the Plains Army. We have all those people. Yeah, I just, I agree. I just think that you cannot let titles get to your head. You agreed? Yeah, I agree. Okay, okay. You just can't, you just can't let those titles, oh, I'm now the, you know, the lead dental assistant yes. or yeah. the oh, supervisor yeah, yeah. for the ordering department. No, you, you, you got to stay humble and you got to stay committed and you got to stay Focus on your on the on what's going to drive the revenue and the growth of the of the of the practice. I think that you know people need to understand that and people need to receive that because there's two guys sitting here. Like when we go into a, a business meeting, he's Doc, right? Hey, I'm Doctor Alex Plains. You know, nice to meet you. I'm just Jeremy. I mean, we don't <laughs> ever say you don't ever say, hey, I'm the CEO, I'm the owner. You don't ever say any of that stuff. You're just like, you know, I'm Doc. But how many times do I literally just go in there and say I am the owner? Hardly ever. Yeah, because I, I feel that if I've done a good job as a leader and as an owner, they're going to respect me automatically. A million percent. But, you know, if we go back to what we talk about, like yesterday we, we asked one of our directors, like, how do you see your leadership lid? Yeah. And he said that I give myself a four, right? So that means that I am performing at a seven or eight. Correct. I'm not at a 10, nowhere near a 10, because if I was at a 10, he might be at a six or a seven. So the first thing I do is I hold myself accountable and I say, you know, what can I do to improve so that he can get up to a six or a seven or an eight? Because at the end of the day, he's a reflection of me. Yep. So I must be slacking off or I might not be coaching him the right way. And I think that you are very good at saying that because there are, I mean, there's sayings out there all over the place about you're only as good as your team. You're only as good as your weakest link. You're only as good as blah, blah, blah. And it's true. Like, and he even identified, you know, my team is not as strong as I want them to be. Well, that's kind of a reflection on you, just like you just said. Yeah, but at least, you know, he, he, he was humble enough to, yes. and, you know, to tell us to how he really felt. Because, you know, a lot of times you got these guys that do, like, their lit assessment of where they rank themselves – um, as a as an employee or as a company, and they give themselves all nine. It's delusional. But when you start breaking <laughs> down it, when you start breaking it down, they're like, "Yeah, you're right. I don't have the necessary tools to continue to grow." And I love how you said that because sometimes when we get into those conversations, where listen, you're gonna have team members that are delusional. You know, you're gonna have team members that are like, "Hey, I am perfection." You know what I mean? <laughs> but then when we sit down, we're like, they're like, "Oh shit! Oh, oh, people." Oh. One of the main things, if you're going to be an owner or CEO or, you know, you're going to run a company, you got to be able to look at yourself in the mirror and meet your weaknesses. Yeah, for sure. And you got to work on them. You just got to build up from them because, you know, I am not the same Alex that I was five, ten years ago, not even a year ago. But this last year, I've dedicated myself to self-development and self-growth and personal development, right? So, yes. I'm not going to be this. If I continue this path, which I hold myself accountable, and it ain't easy. It ain't easy to wake up in the morning and be like, okay, I'm going to listen, you know. But it becomes a habit, and eventually it just becomes a routine, and by the time you know it, you're doing it every day consistently. And I, I am a biggest – I'm his biggest fan with respect to that, guys, because he really does focus on that. Thank you. You know, he tries to improve himself on a daily – 
And I think that's part of his strengths of being an owner and a CEO of an organization is he's always trying to do self-improvement. Yeah, it's much easier to just turn on, you know, the music or put Pandora and listen to music. But yeah. what are you going to get out of that 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 song? I mean, they're nice. Yeah. And there's always a time and a place to do it. But I believe that you got to run your – if you, every day – you have a couple wins, you're winning. Yeah. I mean, and it doesn't need to be every single day you have this lavish, you know, big win. But every single day, if you do minor little wins, you're winning. And right. if you win five out of seven days a week, you're good. You're good. You're sure. definitely doing well. For sure. For sure. So those are great questions. Oh, yeah. I, amazing questions. Any more for me? No, I think that uh, those two questions should do it for today. What All right. Thinking? Well, keep them coming. All right. Hey. Keep DMing us. You know, we'll we'll catch up. We'll catch up with those questions on future podcasts. And um, you know, we look forward to continuing to communicate with our with our Plains family. Absolutely. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. Follow us at Dr. Alex A. Plains or listen to us on YouTube, live stream with Dr. Alex Plains. Thank you. Mm-hmm.